uh, the, the way that the information was scattered about it inside the video, it was very difficult and it would be very, uh, it wouldn't be proper sort of to chop up the video and just put the, 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 the what we call the pertinent segments in there. So, uh, as I said, this stuff, this is stuff that you can go back to uh, at a later point in time in terms of reference uh, and use this as further research. So, in other words, this isn't simply uh, stuff that's going to be out there for the entertainment purposes. It has, it, it's fluff. It has nothing to do with anything. Uh, because I am a researcher and this is based on research, uh, this is where we're going to go with the channel. Uh, with the show Big Bang Theory, out. It's behind, and I said this before, it's behind, it's behind the scenes uh, look at the research that I do. I'm, I'm a natural physicist. Uh, my main uh, theory is exploration of the universe. I began that with the random walk, and it was from this particular book uh, here. Let me just get this uh, out like this. It was started from this one here called The Cosmic Code. And I'm learning how to place things because I re realized that when uh, I place it over here, if there's a graphic there, can't see it if there's a graphic there. So uh, there's no graphic here. This is the best place to see it and the best place to show things. I have to do uh, to show it long enough so that you can read it. Uh, if I don't do it that, I don't, if I don't do it long enough, then uh, you're not going to be able to see that. So this, that's the book that. Uh, started everything. And I basically, uh, the entire thesis that I had worked on uh, for my PhD and everything came out of that book. And that thesis became my theory. And uh, here we are, uh, sort of 20 years later, 20 plus years later, uh, on my college doing Big Bang Theory RL. So, uh, Big Bang Theory RL is inter interconnected with my research. It's part of where we're going. And it will look at the different things that we're doing and basically, my research can be summed up in the and sort of the the method of my research can be summed up in the following manner: take the and, and, uh, take the analogy of making a, a large puzzle, say two three thousand piece puzzle. Uh, if anyone is familiar with doing uh, a two thousand piece puzzle or any, any puzzle larger than a thousand pieces, knows that this puzzle is going to take a very long time, and that is not as simple as simply doing the edges and filling the rest in. It's basically that procedure. But other uh, other techniques of search, search and sorting, uh, sort of puzzle building, uh, in terms of finding what pieces go where, have to come in. So uh, your your sense of logic really has to adjust and change to the thought of what you're doing. Now to do we. Uh, to do the work based on cosmic code, but basically quantum physics, right, as a language of nature. And what this, what this is saying, quantum physics is a language of nature, says that quantum physics and the principles of quantum physics, particularly the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and the random walk, should apply to all areas. In other words, from this particular point, you should be able to go up and explore the entire universe. Basically, uh, you could turn the Earth or anything into here, uh, like here into your Starship Enterprise and then move your way on up from there. And, uh, if this is your interest, and it was my interest, the next step is if you now, now that you've got the idea, you've got the idea of the puzzle you want to build. You have no idea what the pieces are. It's not a matter of simply uh, getting that puzzle up and looking for, and looking for the edges and then building on it. In other words, in a puzzle, all the box, all the pieces are provided for you in that box, even though there's a lot of box, a lot of pieces in that box. In, in the two three thousand piece puzzle, once you've mastered those two two three thousand piece puzzles. The next step is to go out and do a puzzle that where the pieces aren't given to you, and you have to hunt and find for the, find them all over the world. And that's basically how I got into library science. Is I realized that uh, the collection, the collecting of books, is the initial beginning um, uh, of that sort of the, the, that random walk. You pick up a book, you read it, add it to your library. Pick up a book or several books go through them, categorize them, put them into your library. And as your library goes and has more and more topics to it in different sections of the, you know, different, you have now have more than one bookshelf or more than one room, uh, your library starts to overflow into a whole bunch of different areas. And then you have to start to, to recategorize how you do things. Uh, going from shelves, 
as topics to sections of the library or stacks uh, that have uh, how or how those different topics. And of course, you can subdivide, interconnect all these different subjects. Like in other words, uh, let's say you're doing um, archaeology. Right? You have, are working on the Byzantine and Antiquity Studies Institute, because archaeology goes into Byzantine and Antiquity Studies Institute. But you can always uh, cross-categorize it, because archaeology also goes into science. Because the tools that more often not used in archaeology are basically that of science. So, uh, and more particularly physics. Well, yeah, see, physics is it, it, it is not properly understood by a lot of people because physics is the pinnacle of all sciences, and every other science basically rests off, uh, rests off of, and and comes from within physics. So, let's say you're studying uh, you know, genes in in uh, biology, right? You're a biologist. You're studying genetics, genetic materials. Uh, as a biologist, you go into chemistry to, use to, do the, to understand the genes. The chemistry that gives you the understanding of the genes sits inside of physics as a phys because the physics determines uh, how the molecules inside the gene will actually behave and how they will sort of sit together. That will give you, and also the technology, the, the, the way you see genes and measure what's going on, all comes with it. That equipment comes from physics. So, uh, as I said, areas often uh, intersect with each other, they have overlapping areas, they influence each other, and the common pinnacle, 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 the common point is physics. So if you start with astrophysics, you're now at that beginning point, and with quantum physics you can now go out and start uh, seeing where uh, quantum physics actually applies and how it applies to different areas. And as you do that, as you sort of move further on out, uh, you begin to collect your library, you begin to sort of collect your, your, your collection, and the li all the library is the collection of information. And that could be any information, it could be uh, uh, ancient artifacts, so museums in fact are libraries, and, uh, or, or any type of museum is a library. Any collection, small or large, is a library, and this is the first, when I... I always thought the libraries had to be large, they had to be like, you know, like a high school library. And then I just went and saw the university libraries, and they're massive. Uh, multiple, multiple floors, multiple rooms. And then I never really considered the museum to be a library, but then I started rethinking it. And I started seeing that the museums were actually libraries. Then you, you could re sort of totally rethink of how you would actually approach building a library. And I also saw that you could have libraries, specialized research libraries that are single room. Right? So you can go from a single room library, then that internet can connect with a computer to other larger libraries. So in other words, how you structure your library is up to you. There's a lot of different choices. And this is where my research comes from. This is how I connect to booktubing now. Because it is all library research. It is all about books and information and uh, the collection of information. So that's library science. And this show, Big Bang Theorel, is designed to show you behind the scenes. And you'll be seeing, uh, as of this week, uh, some of the work I'm doing on uh, documentary production. I'll be pu putting segments on during the week that will eventually end up uh, in... Uh, documentaries that I'm working on. So this, a lot of the test work, a lot of the, uh, the test designs will come out here, and then we can go from there on into uh, more uh, elaborate documentaries, more, uh, you know, more in-depth stuff. In other words, you're not going to have here, this is going to be a lot like, in terms of the, qu the, the quality of material here, is going to be more like, like PBS. It's not going to be exciting in terms of uh, there's not going to be any conflict, there's not going to be any drama here. Uh, I'm not going to be silly or do anything like that. This is primarily, uh, if you're interested in science, if you like physics, if you like astronomy, if you like the space program, this is what's going to come up here in Big Bang Theory or else, because this is the research that I'm doing. 
there will be some other lighter stuff because you can go into music and do the history of music. Uh, there's also science behind music. So there's a whole bunch of things that can be done here. Uh, some of the things I'm, thinking of, um, I'm planning out right now, I'm going to do a, a documentary, uh, a science show on Mythbusters. If you really want to watch this Mythbusters, uh, there, there, uh, I figured out there can be a show done on Myth, Myth, Mythbusters. <laughs> Uh, you're getting a speech right when you're tired. Uh, so, I'm going to leave it like this, and this will sort of uh, lead into the next segment, and uh, yeah, that's where things are heading. This is the weekend that went well, and uh, we will see you in the next segment. Take it easy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the section of uh, Big Bang Theory. Section segment, I should say. Yeah, we're continuing on. Uh, as you know, I, I, I stroll around YouTube uh, quite often, uh, just to go see what's happening and uh, keep up the, uh, the the neighborly friendliness. You know, because you're strolling around, you say hi to one neighbor, you say hi to another neighbor, and all the different people you meet on YouTube. And this gives your channel uh, a better presence on YouTube, because as you walk around, as you comment on things and say hello and this and that, uh, it develops a sort of a community environment where you have your friends, your neighbors, and you go around to say hello to everybody and so on and so forth. And that's one of the, one of the ways you do that is by uh, when you see somebody commenting on a particular thing, that, uh, a particular issue uh, or uh, point of view that uh, you find interesting, uh, there's no reason why, particularly if you're a YouTuber, you can't com back, comment back right now because comments in the uh, down below in the down below area in the, in the comment section are limited there's no reason why uh, you can't uh, use a video to say hello and that's what I'm doing is I'm I went by um, uh, this uh, one youtuber named uh, Chrissy XO I like her videos very much she's a very talented singer and uh, she put up this uh, video on high school advice I can't explain my hair, so enjoy. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. This is Sunday, and what is this? It's not shoutouts, what's going on? Well, I figured I need to make this now before it's too late, and then it's just another video floating around like, what are you doing? School started. So we will return to shoutout Sunday next Sunday. Amen, hallelujah. Hey guys, I've gotten a lot of requests for this video, so yeah. Okay, so high school. A lot of you guys are freshmen watching this, so it's all new to you. High school is a jungle. <laughs> okay, I'm exaggerating, but it's possibly the most life-changing four years of your life. Now I know some people will say I'm not the one to give this advice, because one, I'm only gonna be a junior, but hey, I had quite the freshman and sophomore years, so I can relate. And two, you guys probably don't know this, but I'm actually not going to be attending a regular high school this year, and I will explain that near the end of the video. But you guys act, so here is my advice on high school. This is not ABC Family, this is not Fox, although I would love to be on Glee. But that's another story. You probably already have some basic stereotypes and ideas of what high school is supposed to be like, and that's because of TV. You can't go by what you see in the movies because they're either like, High school is a terrible place and everyone is evil, <laughs> and I just want to die. Or, Woo! Welcome to high school where every day is a party, so let's get trash. All the boys here are gorgeous. Your grades will magically take care of themselves, and after graduation, we'll just party again. No, just. No. High school is a place where you go to learn. You're gonna be there with real people just like you, and you're there to learn and do your best. If you go into it knowing it's not as big and scary as TV makes it seem, you have nothing to be afraid of. This is probably the most frustrating piece of advice you could be given because your high school years are your molding years. You're constantly going to be growing up and changing and finding out who you are and that's totally fine. That's part of the whole idea of high school. What was all of that? However, there are some awesome things about you that will never change and that's why I say be yourself. There's so much already that comes along with high school that you're making it easier on yourself by being yourself. I mean, why put all this energy into making this person that you ain't so that people will accept you? What? Girl, I will slap you right now. Oh, my ratchet just came out. 
a lot of you guys' main concern is making friends. So because of sites such as, I don't know, Tumblr, some of us just aren't so skilled when it comes to human interaction. Up top. Okay, so I found that one of the best ways to make friends besides being friendly is joining clubs and whatnot. Just find what you're interested in, join that club or organization, and just have fun. You'll make friends in no time. Unless you keep the mindset that everybody is a peasant, which is usually true, and you don't even try to be friendly and make friends, that's fine. Be alone. Ugh. High school can be fun, but you gotta remember the real reason that you're there. To get an education. And I know for some of you, education just sounds boring and pointless. I know, there are gonna be lots of times when you're in class like, WHEN IN LIFE AM I EVER GOING TO USE THIS? But this is how I look at it. I am going to use this for the test I'll be taking on it later this week. A big thing to remember is to just do your best. I mean like actually putting in the effort to doing your best. Make time to study, not in front of your laptop. Stay organized, stay on top of deadlines. And ask for help. There is nothing wrong with being unclear about something. So just ask your teacher or even a really smart friend of yours. And remember, don't be dumb to be cool. Thanks to the vlog brothers, we all know it's cool to be a nerd. This is like my number one tip for everything, for school, for life, here. You're gonna have so many influences coming your way, so many new things, both good and bad. Life happens, especially when you're a teenager, so it's important to stay positive. High school is about making mistakes and learning from them. At some point or another, you're gonna hit an obstacle that requires you to be strong and overcome it. So when something bad happens, you have a split second to decide how you're gonna let it affect you. And when you decide, I don't care how poopy the situation is, I'm going to look on the bright side even if there isn't one, I'ma make one up. That's not just thinking positive, that's maturity, and that will get you far. So those are my tips for you. I hope they weren't that boring. But yeah, I said before I would talk about my personal school situation, for which I'll be posting a separate video on my second channel. Once that video is up, I'll add an annotation, but until then, click the link in the down bar and go and subscribe to my second channel. Also in the description box, you'll find links to my Twitter and Tumblr. You can always talk to me on there anytime if you have any kind of questions or you just want to talk. And yeah, that's it for this video. So I hope you all have a fantastic school year and I will see you when I see you. Okay, bye! Yeah, so that was her high school advice video. And, uh, she also, I found out at the end, made a my school situation uh, video. And I decided uh, to watch that uh, right after I had watched the high school video, her high school advice video, and she had this to say. <laughs> this shirt is really cool. The back is even cuter. It's got like lace. Okay, anyway, okay, I don't know what the point of that was. But hey, um, yeah. So I made my back to school high school advice video that I'm I'm really proud about. You should go check that out if you haven't. Annotation will be somewhere on here. But yeah, in that video I said I would talk about my personal school situation, um, that's what I keep calling it, but, um, this year I'm gonna be a new student. I don't know, secretly I've always wanted to be a new student, fun fact, I don't know why. It just seemed cool in the movies, but this is probably a one in a million chance that it actually is gonna be awesome like a movie, but anyway, I will be going to what's called an early college. I talked about it a little bit in one of my beta vlogs, I think it's titled New School or whatever, but this is just a whole concept in depth for those of you who are curious. Okay, you have high school and then you have college. Okay, where I'm going, it's on a college campus. It's a high school within a college, but it's not a normal high school. Um, ugh, I'm trying to make this, like, as simple as possible. Basically, I'm earning all my high school credits earlier. At the same time, I'm earning college credits. And, instead of just four years, there's a fifth year. For me, I'll be starting my junior year, so I'll be there for three years total. That extra year is, like, pre-college, I guess. But I'm earning real college credits. And then, once I graduate, I will be a junior in college. I know. Once I graduate from my early college, my friends, my friends at my old school will be sophomores, but I will be a junior. I think that makes sense. I hope I didn't repeat myself too much, but um, that's basically the idea of it. I'm really excited for it. Yeah, this schooling program works better for me personally because I'm not that kind of student that, you know, hangs around the hallways or, you know, I don't socialize that much. I do with 
people I'm friends with, obviously, but it's not a regular school for, like, the regular student, and I would not consider myself the regular student. I, I'm always, like, the first one to class, because I, I, like, speed to class. I don't talk to anyone. At my old school, I had, like, one main friend I would sit with at lunch. Hey, Diamond, if you're watching this. <laughs> regular high school just wasn't for me, and I had to, had to leave my old school, because it was just... Some people have asked me why am I moving schools. Um, one, you know, regular high school didn't really work for me. Two, there was some like bullying. I don't really like to call it bullying because it was just every day. It didn't feel like it. It just felt like, oh, this is normal, which it shouldn't be. It was bad, but I mean, tolerable, but it shouldn't be tolerable. I don't know if I'm making sense. Bullying shouldn't be tolerable, but I tolerated it, basically. So it doesn't seem like a big deal to me. But anyway, I left because I don't know, in my mind I just, I felt too mature, like I couldn't, I felt too, I don't know, I, I was coming to school for the right reasons and there were other students like that at my old school but it was only a handful and so like, I don't know, so I had to go somewhere where that percentage of students that care and want to go to school and want to learn is the majority and that's exactly where I'm going. Oh my gosh, pros, there are so many pros, there's like no cons, I mean the only cons would be I have no friends going into it, but I do. I knew one guy, he was my shadow um, for when I was first uh, registering and all that. I knew him from middle school, and then I made so many friends at orientation that I, I vlogged about it during beta, but I had orientation. Everyone was so nice, and oh, it was just so perfect because all the people that go there were like, okay, I won't say all, but basically everyone who goes to my early college, they felt like outcasts at their school. Not so much socially, but like academically, it was just like we didn't fit in there. So when we all came here, we're all like the cool kids, I consider cool kids, that accept each other and are just really awesome and are there to learn and it's just peaches and cream and I couldn't be happier. Bonus fact I talked about in that beta vlog, our cafeteria in about two weeks after school starts because they're doing remodeling, we're gonna have a Starbucks in the cafeteria. They told us this at orientation, I about died. I just, mini heart attack when I was sitting down in my chair. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy. Two more fun facts. My classes don't start until 9 a.m. in the morning. And on Mondays, I'm taking a college acting class with like full on adults and everything. It's, it's college. I'm so excited. I get to wear what I want. We had a dress code at my old school. I hated it so much. I can wear sweatpants on Mondays. I could cry, I'm just so happy about sweatpants on Mondays. But okay, I'm rambling. I'm gonna go. That's my school situation if anyone was curious. And you should go check out my high school advice video. And yeah, I love you guys and I will see you whenever. Yeah, so I watched her, I watched the second video and halfway through she talked about her bullying situation and how she was bullied every single day. But she tolerated and got used to it. And so I thought that uh, I'd begin with that section here and sort of focus on that because in her advice to uh, to uh, the, I guess, freshman class and those uh, in grade 8 concerning what's going to happen in high school is that you try to say, oh, don't worry about it, high school is going to be okay, it's not that bad, and so on and so forth. But you do end up in situations, and I was like this, uh, uh, when I was in school, where I ended up being bullied a lot, and it was a sort of same situation. You got used to it, and so that it did. It, you found you found, you could find ways around it. And what she was in a quandary about is that she 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 her quandary is on the mixed message that's being sent uh, with this whole anti-bullying campaign. And about that, they talk about how anti-bullying is, it, 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 uh, you know, bullying is isn't good. That you should be doing this, and that if you are being being bullied, you should go tell somebody and talk to a teacher. And anyone who's been bullied, and she probably knows this as well, that there really isn't a solution to it. The bullying doesn't stop because you go talk to somebody. And this is a large chunk. One of the reasons why people move schools and they change schools because. They, they've talked to the parents, they've talked to the teachers, they've talked to the principal, they've talked till they're blue in the face about being bullied. And nothing is done. And so the only other option is to leave. And the thing is that if you don't get into that mindset where you start ignoring the bullies and the bullying, and some days you, there's no way around it, 
you know, just like everyone else, you, you know, some, everyone typically has a bad day where things really get on your nerves and uh, you're just sort of pissed off at the world. And uh, these slight little things that, that normally wouldn't bother, or normally would roll off your shoulder in terms of the bullying, doesn't. Uh, everyone has those days, everyone has that type of sort of that mood. Uh, but more often than not, uh, bullying, uh, you can ignore it. And if you look at, uh, and this is what the, a lot of people haven't done, and you don't see this in the bullying campaigns, and this is why I've begun my campaign about bullying, not to uh, sing and dance and say, oh, don't bully anybody anymore, it's not so cool, right? You know, you know the songs have come up with the very. They've got these kids doing these uh, uh, the, the dances, and they, you know, they got the rappers going, "Hey, it's not cool. It's not cool to bully." You know, and they, they, they've got they've got their whole song and dance about this thing. But nobody in bullying campaigns ever stands up and says, "I was bullied and how they dealt with it." And, and, because they're talking, they're, the, the whole anti-bullying campaign comes is coming about because uh, now with the internet and so on and so forth, when uh, uh, someone who is feeling bullied, who is feeling isolated and alone, uh, can publicize that they're, they're dead, and that's what happens. Every so every school year, you see uh, something come across Facebook or something coming across YouTube, and you'll see this. You go and go onto YouTube. And type in RIP or anti -bully, uh, uh, bullying, cyber bullying, I -R -R -I -R -R -I -B, right? RIP stands for rest in peace. And you will come up with a list, a whole list of uh, videos where somebody has died. There's either a tribute to them or, or, or a comment about them or, or, or something about their death. And in the schools, they have these media projects where uh, these, and these media study courses. Where uh, in every one of these media study courses, they have the kids uh, 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 do a project on cyberbullying and the consequences of cyberbullying, and they always have somebody depressed in there. They have you know curled up in the fetal position in the corner of the room, you know, rocking back and forth, and going, oh, I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm alone. And uh, then of course you see them either the pills spill out of the hand, or they, they have this fake ketchup blood going out and. You know the, the whole, you know the whole, the whole acting bit where they're trying, you know the the drama, the the the, the, the pathos uh, comes out in, in sick forms. But the thing is, that what they don't have is they don't have real people who've gone through this issue. And in this situation isn't anything new. Uh, if you want to, uh, for those of you who uh, know Disney Channel. Go take a look at the show Lizzie McGuire. The dad in Lizzie McGuire played a part in the 1980s uh, in a movie called Revenge of the Nerds. And it's all about the, bull the whole bullying situation was depicted back then. Look at any of your cartoons. Any of the cartoons are, that you talk about. There's always the, the quintessential bully in there. There's always, you know, the teachers aren't doing anything about bullying. And when you look at these shows, and you look at the, 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 the Mean Girl stuff and stuff like that, you, you, you can realize that the schools, uh, for a long time, haven't done anything and haven't tackled the, the bullying problem. If the bullying problem is really a problem, but, you know, it is a problem, but, you know, it's not a cause that is resolvable. Bullying is a conflict between a variety of different personalities. Normally in high school, and this is the way schools are set up, and I did a, I did a segment on this in the last Big Bang Theory episode of Big Bang Theory uh, on the organization and structure of schools, which is designed to keep people in a specific box. Schools are designed to mold people into and, and have them conform to a particular uh, a particular view of society. And that's why you have all the courses you do. That's why you have the teachers the way they mark. That's the way they. That's the why they mark the way they mark. And that's why you have assemblies. The assemblies there are there to present you with how you should behave and how you should think in society. And there's no room for deviation. They will not present an opposing view 
or they, and they will not present a minority view. They will present the view that they believe should be the standard. And if you try to go against that standard, you're going to get into trouble for it, and they're going to try to hammer you down. And this is so what happens. Once you start going outside what they call the school norm, and this normal think, you now become different from the peers or your friends in school or the people in school. And this is what makes you a, a target for bullying. Anyone who is different, and it could be any reason for why you're different. It could be you're, you're a strange person or whatever. I was certainly a strange person. And because I stood outside the norm, and I didn't care about this. I always stood outside the norm. I didn't care that I wasn't normal. Uh, I was a target for bullying. But the thing is, I said I didn't care that I wasn't normal. That I, that I wasn't uh, that I wasn't normal. It didn't bother me to be the individual that I was. I mean, uh, you know, I didn't have any have any problems with uh, going and skipping rope with the girls. I didn't have any problems wearing colors like pink or whatever or anything like that. That wasn't it, 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 it had, for me. It, it, people go. Oh. Don't you know what wearing pink means, or don't you know what it means when you're skipping rope? No, what does it mean? <laughs> I, for me, it, I wanted to go skip rope with the girls. That's what I wanted to do. And it had no further meaning for me than, than, that, than that. There wasn't any connotation behind a lot of the stuff I did, simply because I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And, and that's as simple as it was. That's as complex as it was. It was, there wasn't any, any, uh, complex Freudian reason for my behavior. Although most teachers in, 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 who are in the, in the school societies, the school society they, is, as a group, uh, are all based on the Freudian concepts of psychology uh, and are motivated in this direction. And this is why you have sex ed, and this is why you have the, a, a lot of this uh, uh, gay education coming into schools now. Because a lot of the schools are there to bring in this whole concept of Freudian psychology, which really doesn't exist anymore because Freudian psychology contradicts itself so fundamentally that uh, 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 anything based on Freudian psychology it can no longer call itself psychology because psychology from under, under Freud's concept doesn't exist. In other words, uh, Freud's arguments on psychology basically and fundamentally eliminates psychology itself. In other words, it, it destroys itself. Um, and the thing is, because this is the way schools are, anyone who falls outside the, uh, as I said, anyone who falls outside the standard norms or the expectations within school automatically becomes a target for bullying. And the only option is because schools only act within standard boundaries, again, within their psychological concepts, uh, which fundamentally don't exist. <laughs> In other words, they're they themselves are kind of mental. Uh, the only option is to change schools and see if you can find a better situation, or just simply brush it off your shoulder and like, I, I did this and now I'm finding uh, another person who has done the same thing. So here you have a major generation gap, someone, someone who is young, someone who is older, and we basically had the same reaction to bullying, uh, you know, Yeah, so we have basically have the same reaction to bullying. So, when you go and talk about bullying and talk about how what high school your, your high school experience is going to be like, well, your high school experience is going to be pretty much the same thing uh, as you had for the rest of your, your your schooling. If you find yourself strange, if you're in uh, junior high, or middle school, and elementary school, and you find yourself strange and isolated, chances are in high school that you're going to find this exact same situation. Now, uh, and the thing is, for boys, it's you get beat up a lot. For girls, they make fun of you, they call you names, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can take your pick. Which do you want, you want, which do you want to have? Do you want to be beat up every single day uh, 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 by the boys, or do you want to be, have, uh, have, 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 be called names? It's one of the two. I, mean, I, I had both. I had names, and I had uh, being beat up every day. But, you know, <laughs> and the thing is, here's the thing is, you got beat up every day, not by the bad bully, yeah, bad bully, you know, you know, it wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't get beat up by the bad boys, I got beat up by the popular kids, you know, the jocks, the good boys, you know, and the thing is, this is the, this is the killer part, the, you know, the part that kills me, and every, it's just the same thing for every generation, uh, 
they're always sweet around parents and the people who are in the adult who care. They know how to manipulate these people to think that these people think that these kids are absolutely they're beautiful, they're angels, they're uh, well, you know, well liked, they're popular, they're, you know, and they can do nothing wrong. And as soon as the parents' backs are turned, and as soon as the school administrators' backs are turned, that's when the shit starts starts to happen. And then they're always doing something. They're always pulling something. And every time the parents turn around, oh, sweet boy, you know. And I use the Greek accent here for <laughs> that. And in other words, most parents who are of this uh, esteem stature do not want to see the self-esteem of their children damaged. And self-esteem, if you look up the definition of self-esteem and go into the history of the world, uh, history of the word, you will find that self-esteem is a synony uh, is synonymous with the word narcissism. And that means they are bringing up with this whole culture of self-esteem as the main focus now. People who are self-centered, egotistical, and care only about themselves. In other words, they're gent they're, they're the, 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 the virtue that they hold above all else is conceit, self-centeredness, egotism, e e egotism, e being egotistical, and being selfish. This is their virtue, and this is the standard they're teaching everyone in school. So when they talk about oh, cyberbullying and, and the effects of bullying, they're not talking about dealing with reality. They're talking about, oh, their problem is, the problem with the, with the victims of bullying, they're just not self-centered enough. You're not an, you're not an, enough of a narcissist to, to, to fit in with it. So they're going to sing and dance and sing a song about you so that you can become narcissistic. And say, you are awesome. You are amazing. You need to sit down and talk to yourself in the mirror and give yourself self-affirming messages every single day. Really? That's your solution to, to the problem? Be more self-centered? Be more, uh, be more of a narcissist? <laughs> and they wonder why it hasn't worked uh, in, more, in more than 20 years. Nothing of these, in this whole this bullying campaign hasn't worked in 20 years. Well, if self-centeredness, if, 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 if being egotistical, being a narcissist caused the bullying problem, how is being more narcissistic? more narcissistic going to resolve the problem. <laughs> so, I know, that's, that, that's kind of the situation going into school. Uh, this is my take on it. I, you know, I just sit back and laugh at it now because if you go, and I've had this experience, if you look at things in hindsight and you look at where people are now, and I've seen this, I've seen kids who were, you know, who were popular in school, they're now older, and I tell you, life balances up. The kids who are popular in school today will have a fundamentally shit life when they're older. I don't know how, how many adults I talk to who were popular when they, when they were the kids. The majority of them that I talk to now hate life. They're always complaining about something. They never have anything good to say. I mean, but it's just mind-boggling. They were popular. They, 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 it is not that they don't have anything. It is because when life, when they left high school, when they left uh, the the protection of the sort of this isolated world in school that isn't reality. It's basically a fantasy. And the reality of life hits them. They got kicked in the ass, and they are not living their life dreams. Uh, they get very bitter. And you see, most people, 90% of, po of the population will not live the life dream that they had. They will not be what they wanted to be as kids or what they dreamed to be. Th that will not happen. And they're in some fallback career, including teaching. I don't know how many te teachers I know never started off to be teachers, but were, had a dream of being something else, and then ended up being teachers because they failed at what they wanted to do. In other words, they couldn't do what they wanted or they failed at and so they became teachers. That's where a lot of you teachers come from. That's why a lot of you teachers 
who sit in your class day after day, and this is what they're going to be doing for the rest of their life, teaching the same subject over and over again. This is why a lot of the times when you wonder why, why a teacher has the attitude that they have, and you know what I'm talking about, is because this teacher is there day in, day out, for the rest of their life. This is what their rest of their life is going to be. There is nothing more to look for. They're not going to be pushing the boundaries. They're not going to be breaking any barriers. They're not going to be that thing that they thought that they were going to be when they were younger. They're going to end up... And so, this is how things end up. As I said, if you're going through high school and, you're, and you find yourself in the, that you are this unusual student, you're not part of the mainstream, and you are going to find yourself being bullied, and you're going to be a target of bullying, don't worry about it. Uh, there are a lot of people who have gone through it. Uh, not many people will stand up and say this, but I will. And the thing is, is that life evens out. How you handle bullying really will determine how your life ends up turning out. If you ignore the bullying and see be not being part of the crowd as a bonus and as a plus, then you'll do well. Because you allow you to do things that you wouldn't or wouldn't ordinarily, you know, uh, wouldn't ordinarily think is okay to do. Um, give you an example here. If you're a victim and you and thinks you're not normal and, don't, and, and won't allow you to join your own, join in the group, there's a lot of things you can do individually on your own. As a matter of fact, because people who are in group things tend to follow and, and be afraid of standing outside the group. Uh, it limits what they can do because they, they're only, only limited to what the group can do. So if you're in a group and you fit in with this group, you're going to do what that group does and you're not going to do anything outside of that group in terms of interest because you'll be afraid that if that group finds out, then you'll be kicked out of that group. And I know this from experience that, the, that when you try to get into a group, you have to think like that group and this doesn't matter what group it is. Uh, even there, uh, you know, there are the uh, the uh, these are the golf, and this is also true of the rockers. There was a group of you know rockers who uh, uh, these are the ones who enjoy heavy metal. They go to the concerts and stuff. They don't go to uh, uh, they're not they're not the pop princesses and stuff like that. They don't they're not into Britney Spears. They're not into uh, uh, Selena Gomez or any of that type of stuff like Justin Bieber. Uh, as a matter of fact, these are the ones who will oh Justin Bieber he's a piece of crap. You know I don't like him at all. You know. Uh, how can you like that fluff? It's all mainstream commercial stuff. And they go out and they have their own bands, and they talk about not being mainstream and being different from everybody else. But as soon as you go to the concert, all you do is you take a look around and see what's going on at the concert. See everyone at the concert there. Everyone's dressed exactly the same. The individualism that they thought they had in school, not being part of the mainstream, all of a sudden now becomes mainstream within that group. And as soon as someone steps outside of that, and here's a given example, let's say, and I will agree that Justin Bieber has come up with some pretty good songs. And coming up and writing songs, writing songs from Justin Bieber, that's not an easy thing to do. So you can't really dismiss it and say, oh, this guy's a piece of crap. You have to give the guy credit. Maybe you don't like the music, his style of music, you're into something else, but you can't say that the person is crap because you know, it, it, you don't know what what it, what it takes to write that piece of music or or, or perform like that. Uh, and the thing is, is that what they also don't realize is that when you're in that group of people, and this is, and this is what I'm talking about here, uh, you can't like other music. You can't like some of the songs from Justin Bieber. You can't like some of the songs from Selena Gomez, even though they may be good. Uh, you're restricted to that particular group. And here's the irony of that group. That group is uh, that you're listening to, that the alternative music, that uh, the indie rock bands. They're not indie. They're not alternative. They're part of the music industry. You're being sold a commercial product in the exact same way that anyone who is a pop princess is, or in the mainstream. You're being sold on. Again, and here's your proof. Go and try to download the songs from free from any file sharing site, and go tell these indie pop bands and these, uh, these alternative rock groups who are signed with these records, that you've done this. And see how, how long it takes for the cops to arrive to your door to take away your computer and, and, and haul you out to jail because you've downloaded, illegally downloaded copyrighted material. 
As soon as you see that copyrighted material, that copyright on that material, and you have those downloading restrictions, you have been sold a product no matter what genre or no matter how alternative or indie you think you are, you're being sold a product. These people who are standing on the stage are standing in costume. They're your clowns, they're your circus act, they're your entertainment. And that's all they are. And it doesn't matter what they say in their songs or how badass they pretend to be. And that's what it is, they're pretending to be badass. These people are mainstream, they're lawyers, they're business people, and you're being sold a product. This is the reality. And this reality does not hit home until much later after graduated. It usually starts hitting home around the age of 25. This is when the reality starts to bite. And it kicks most people so hard in the ass that you now have a new crisis of life. Before you had a midlife crisis at 50, uh, most people, most kids today can expect a life, uh, midlife crisis at 25. The first midlife crisis is going to come at 25 when the fullness of the, re of the real world really hits home and it's going to kick you in the ass. Anyways, this is my high school advice. If you want any more advice, uh, you want to find out anything more about this uh, in terms of uh, how people end up turning out, it is predictable to, to sort of determine where people are going to end up. You can do, you can do this. is ba is based on behavior analysis. So if you're interested in behavior analysis, you're interested in sort of finding out how people are going to turn out, I can give you a little bit of a clue on how to go figure that out. Anyway, that's it for this segment. I will see you in other segments next in the upcoming segments of Big Bang Theory. Or, uh, all right, take it easy. Professor of what? Professor of physics. Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.